Okay, when we get to step 27, uh, plow float, we send you a double acting cylinder for your plow so we don't need a plow float. But if we had the special valve on it that you could float your plow, then you could turn this feature on and then, uh, you know, if you had one hose going to your plow lift cylinder, that's when you might want it as long as you had the right valve to go along with it. Uh, but we always send them out with two hoses on it, with a, a, a up and a down hose. The reason we do that, quite honestly, there's no, there's no reason to have it, um, except for one, is that when you lower the plow down to the ground um, and you've got it double acting, then that retracts the cylinder a little bit and creates some slack in the chain. So if we hit a low spot in the road or something, that slack gets taken up and we are able to plow through that low spot. If you had a single acting cylinder and only had one hose going to the plow, you would need to leave it in float because once you drop it down to the ground, it stops. So if you hit that dip in the road, it just scoots right across the top of the dip. And the float allows the cylinder to retract a little bit more to go down in that dip. Quite honestly, I prefer the double acting cylinder. And there's another reason, reason two, is number two is we're lubricating both sides of the piston. Both sides of the pistons have oil on them at all times, so we're not worried about contamination. And think about it now, that cylinder going up and down, the top end of that cylinder's got to breathe a little bit. Are we gonna breathe that air, that salty air, or are we gonna breathe oil and push oil into the top of it? So my personal preference is double acting, hands down, because of those two main reasons. Uh, so you typically would not turn that on. Um, here's another thing, step 28, uh, hoist delay. Hoist delay, and I don't know why they put this in here. I absolutely don't like it, but you know, I'm, I'm not the engineer that, that programmed this, although I did have some say, but I didn't object to it. Um, but hoist delay means that the moment that I hit this button, how long is it gonna take before the dump actually operates? We can put a delay in it from zero to two, three seconds, whatever it is. But when we push this button, it would delay that long until it starts to work. I really don't want that. As soon as I hit that button, by golly, I want this thing to work. You know, it's just that simple. But this is just one of those things that they put in there and, and you can turn it on and off. I can tell you right now, it's off. It's not operated. Uh, it's not set. And I would recommend that you don't set that. Um, okay. Some of the earlier versions, uh, earlier revisions only goes up to step 29. But we do have some that goes up through 34 steps now. Um, now, those were added after the fact. After we got some of these out in the fleet, we realized, well, you know, some of these other things would be neat. Let's put some programmable uh, parameters in there. Those are done by uh, revisions, and we're up to a revision E at this point. And, uh, uh, and as you go through there, uh, you can see what some of them are. Uh, most of them we don't use. One of them that was nice, Step 32, page 16. Step 32, that was nice because uh, what that does is on this panel here, um, when we turn this system on, it's sending minute amounts of current out to that coil and sensing the current coming back. Number one, to know whether or not we got continuity in this wire. Number two, to know whether or not that coil's bad. So if we get a light that blinks slow, just once in a great while, you'll get a light that blinks something you might not might want to check out because you may have a break in the wire, you may have a wire that has a dead short on it somewhere, or you may have a coil that might be going out. So that was a neat little feature that they put in there that said they could do that. You know, without firing the valve, we can send such a small amount of current to it just to detect that the valve and the coil and all is still there. And so that's what this uh, step is doing, is detecting uh, whether or not that thing's there. So that's a good troubleshooting tool. If a driver calls up and says, hey man, I'm not doing anything. Uh, I've got my system turned on, but I'm not doing anything. And I get a light that blinks every once in a while. Well, you need to find out which light is it. Because when it brings the truck back in, then you got a circuit you can chase down and you can figure out which one it is uh, without opening the whole can of worms. Because whichever one it is, that's the blinking, that's the one that's gonna be uh, the one that could be at fault. Okay, now. The very last thing uh, at, on programming, step 34. When you get all the way to the end of it and you've made all the changes you want to make or you've not made any changes, if you have made any at all, it will not save them until you do this last step. You've got to do this last step or whatever you did prior to that ain't going to work. It's going to go back to factory default. 
And in this case, what we're going to do is what you're going to see. Let me make sure I get this right. Blast and pause. Yep, alternately. So the lights right here for blast and pause, they're going to be wigwagging back and forth like this, like a railroad signal. They're going to be back and forth like this. That tells you we're at the end. These two lights blinking back and forth like this. And when you get to that point, you turn the power off, turn the power back on, boom. It saved any changes that we made. So it's just as simple as that. That's how we save the changes when we get to the end. Now if we go through there and we only want to make one change, we still got to go all the way to the end because we got to save that change. We got to get to the back door here. And when we turn it off and turn it back on, we just saved that change. It's just that simple. So just remember that. You can only go one way. This is a one-way street. We can't back up. Keep up with your blinking lights. You know, the blinking lights tells you what step you're on if you kind of get out of track somewhere. If you mess up, don't worry about it. Just go all the way to the end and start over again. I've had to do that a many a time. Uh, but, you know, we do have up to 34 steps now. And the main thing is, is when you go in there and you do make some changes, you've got to go all the way to the end. And when them two lights are blinking wigwag back and forth like this, then turn it off, turn it back on, boom, save the changes. We're permanent saved at that point. All right, now one other thing that we did do before we get off that subject is uh, let's, look at, uh, let's look at 33, skip blast. I, I something I wouldn't use either. But if you'll look up under the heading of step 33, you'll notice up under here default setting. Default setting was zero, so it tells you what the factory setting was. So if you go in here and you change something, you realize, hmm, I screwed up, I didn't mean to do this. You can go back and you see what the factory, de set, the factory default setting was on it and be able to correct that. So we do give you the factory settings here uh, in case something does go wrong and it doesn't do what you want it to do. You can always resort back to that.